Hey all, Goat here, and today we're doing a, a Toontown Let's Play. So, the idea behind this is we're going to do a Toontown Let's Play, and we're going to try and make it as accessible friendly um, as possible, so that anybody who's never played Toontown before can hop right into this and learn a bit about the game and just get comfortable and maybe learn a thing or two before trying out the game themselves. Um, so that's the idea here, and I figured, why not? Why, why, why not give this a try? So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hop right into the game, and we're going to just make a new tune, we're going to go through the whole game, and I'll give you guys a bit of a, a bit of a tutorial on how we get through this game. Because, you know, I've been playing this game since, uh, well, I played the original Toon Town way back in 2009, and I've been playing ever since, so. For those who don't know who might be joining us today, um, Toon Town Online was an MMO that came out in 2003 by Disney, and later shut down in 2013. It got revived by private servers, uh, the first one being Toontown rewritten. Um, <laughs> its source code got leaked in 2014, and ever since then, so many other private servers have popped up, and Toontown Corporate Clash is one of them. It started out as Toontown Project Altus in 2016, and it's just gradually became its own thing. And here it is today, this is Toontown Corporate Clash, it's got all these new mini-bosses, the gag system's been completely revamped, it's a practically entirely different game, and that's what we're playing today. So, uh, with that, all of that said, we're gonna hop right in and make a tune. Now, that is an ugly looking beaver, look at this dude right here. Um, <laughs> so when Toontown Online first came out in 2003, these were the only six tunes available. You know, you had the dog, the cat, the horse, the duck, the rabbit, and the mouse. Um, which, can I say? The Clash Mouse, uh, they redid all of the like, two models, and the Clash Mouse is like infinitely, infamously, uh... <laughs> it, it's very goofy looking, this man has no chin at all, or a little tiny weak chin, right there. It looks pretty goofy, it looks pretty goofy, but I, I kinda have a soft, soft spot for him. Uh, look at this dude. But, uh, you know, you got these guys, and then... The monkey, the bear, and the pig were added later on in original Toontown's life. Um, they had like a poll, basically, where you could ask which tune wanted to be added to the game. The other candidates that didn't get into the game were the goat, the chicken, and the cow. Um, we have a picture of the chicken model, which never got into the game. We don't know what happened to it, it's probably lost in Disney Vault. And you can still hear the goat sounds in original Toontown, when you like, missed a hole in one. So that was a thing. They were also voiced by the person who played Bubsy and Rooch the Bat, so that's a thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they had never got into the game. When Toontown Written did its first species election in 2016, 2015, no it was 2017, uh, they had a vote between the deer and the alligator, and a couple of species, and in the end the deer and the alligator both got in. And Project Altus acted quick and got them in too, and they also carried over to Clash. The DM model in Project Altus was infamously bad. It was literally just a monkey, retextured slightly to look like a deer, and it had antlers too. <laughs> it looked really bad. But uh, this is quite the improvement, you know, I think you gotta admit here. And these were all the species added in Clash. So you had the beaver, the fox, the bat, the raccoon, uh, and these guys, these guys were also part of a species election, but it was, it was between two different teams instead of voting for the actual species. So you had Team Barnyard, which was goat, sheep, cow, and chicken, and you had these guys on the other team, and these guys won. You had the koala, the kangaroo, the kiwi, and the armadillo. Now I think for our tune in this Let's Play, we're going to be going for a bat. Because I have never had a bat tune on this game before. Um, it's like a man tune anyways. And I'm thinking of using this mouth here, because I love this. I'm gonna give him some eyelashes too. And yeah, I definitely gotta go with the big mouth, I love the big mouth. So you know what, I think this is gonna be our tune. I think this is gonna be our tune right here. Now, you can also color him, and do all that, you can go with multicolors. I don't think I ever really see people use multicolored tunes and Clash. So you know what, I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna give, give uh... <laughs> Uh, about some uh, multicolor. So I gotta figure this out real quick. There you go. Okay. So, 
Here's our tune. I quite like this uh, this look with the different blues and everything. It looks very nice. It's quite 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 cool. I quite like this tune so far. Now we gotta pick out the clothes. And what Clash did was you can now wear skirts. They basically entirely removed. It's not giving me the skirts. Okay, I think you have to. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What Clash did was they entirely removed gender. So now all tunes are just gender neutral and it's a whole thing. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's quite neat. So you can just have any tune with eyelashes and skirts and you can mix and match. It's really nice. I'm really glad they did this. So I think what we're gonna do is maybe just... I think maybe do something like this. Maybe just give them, give them the elitist look. <laughs> maybe just start with that. Use that as like the starting clause. You know, I think... Is it a bit generic? Maybe, but... I don't know, I think it's kinda cute, just giving them the, uh, the flippy look to start out. You know what? I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them a skirt actually, I'll, I'll do this, let me, uh... Gotta figure out, uh, the colour for the pants. I'm really picky with the colours, you know, it's taken me a bit to... <laughs> to decide on one. You know what, this is good. I like this. This is a good, uh, this is a good colour. Now, the hardest part, naming the tune. <laughs> naming the tune. Now, I have no idea what to name this individual. I am not too sure. But I was thinking maybe just going with the pick a name, you know, for, for some of the... Like, I like Snagglecorn, that's a goofy name. Snagglecorn. Uh... Should we go with Snagglecorn? I quite like that name, I think that sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. I think uh, Snagglecorn works. You know what? You know what Snagglecorn it is. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's uh, go with this name. Now this is the new tutorial I added recently, and uh, let's uh, go over it. Because I actually don't think I've played through this uh, fully yet. Hey Professor Pete! Here's that tune I was talking about earlier. Mind showing them the ropes? Sure thing, Lord Loud and Clear. Could you set things up in the training room? Roger! I'll see you shortly, Rookie. Hey there, friend! Let, let's get the simple stuff out the way. You can move your tune with the movement keys. The default options are WASD. And here we are. We are in the video game. Now, unlike original Toontown, which is only bound to the uh, arrow keys and you can only use tank controls, Copper Clash has an orbital camera, so you can just move the camera around like this and just move accordingly. And this is a huge game changer, this really changes how you move around in Clash compared to TTR and original Toontown. It's really, really good. It's, you would not, it might not seem like a big deal to some, but this completely changes how you play the game. It is monumental. And you can also sprint, that's also a thing. Um, and that's also a huge, huge game changer. Great job! Welcome to Toontown, a place full of laughter and fun. Well, that's the idea at least. Loudon will be able to explain our situation better than I can though. Well, speaking of, he should be ready for you by now. Go ahead and check out the training room. Oh boy, I wonder what's gonna go on in this room. Welcome to the training room, rookie. Let's get you prepared. First things first, you need a laugh meter. Now where is it? Ah, there it is. Your laugh meter signifies how happy you are at any point in time. However, if your laugh point hits zero... He's killing me! No! You'll be sad and sent back to the playground. Luckily, when in the playground, you can find treasures. These will heal you back up quickly. So, this is essentially our health meter, if it wasn't already clear. Um... We get hit, uh, we lose life points, and if we die, we get sent back to the hub world of the game, which is at the playground. Why would your laugh hit zero, you may ask? Well, you see, currently, we are under an invasion. An invasion conducted by robots. We call them cogs. These no-fun robots can't take a joke. Thankfully, jokes are our specialty. Gags are used to battle the cogs around town, and I'm going to teach you how to use them. Let's get started. Approach that cog dummy over there. And this is all a very recently added tutorial. Uh, before this, it was a very hands-off tutorial. 
Copper Clash originally was not very beginner friendly, it was very assumptuous that you were already somewhat familiar with original Toontown. And thankfully that has been changed. Um, this is a very, very good tutorial for people who are new to the game and just new to Toontown in general. And you love to see it, you love to see it. So, now we're about to enter our first cog battle and it's pretty interesting. Ready to train? First things first, the battle interface. At the bottom, each tune has a panel that includes their laugh meter and what they are planning to do. Cogs also have their own panels located at the top. This shows their health and level. Most importantly, we have your inventory of gags to smack dab in the middle. Each row represents a gag track and I'll be walking you through the uses of each one. Uh, I am very, very bad at reading stuff aloud so you have to forgive me for this. Um, also I just realised Loudon is 163 laugh which is strange because the highest life you can get currently in the game is 150, so that's very, very interesting. I'm gonna have to ask why that's a thing. Something to remember is that gags are used in track order from top to bottom. Now let's get to using some. Here is a squirt gag for you to use on that desk jockey. Click on it to attack. So squirt is the high accuracy gag um, that also leaves them sucked, and it's a very important gag in this game. In original Toontown, it didn't really have too much of a purpose. Because Zap didn't exist, um, Zap is a thing that was added in Clash. Squirt is almost a must-have in this game. In original Toontown, everyone was required to have Throw and Squirt, but in this game, not so much. You can have any build you want with any gag tracks, as long as you have the training points to accommodate for it, and it's very, very interesting. You will see as we go along in this game, but you can have some crazy diverse builds, and it's... Super, super interesting. Soak is something we call a status effect, which you can see is slotted into that cog's panel. Hovering over a status effect will give you a brief description of what it does. It's good to always be aware of the situation. One of the benefits of Soaked is that the cogs are less likely to dodge our gags. This is a great time to use Drop. It's a very powerful type of gag, but has low accuracy. You just drop a big ol' flower pot on this man's head. This man is now summoning more jockeys. But he's only a level one. That's tiny. Nice, we both hit it. Because of that, we dealt bonus combo damage. Squirt throw and drop gags deal combo damage when used with other gags of their track. However, they used an ability that summoned another cog. Fortunately, we have ways of dealing with multiple cogs at once. Zap gags can only affect soaked cogs, while our electricity can jump to other soaked targets. I spit on you. And there you go. Kaboom. Good teamwork. We even managed to destroy one of them. Hopefully Pete won't be mad about that. Notice that the cog isn't soaked anymore? Sap tries out all the cogs it hits. Also, when I soaked the cog next to the one I targeted, it was still a little bit of splash damage. Anyways, let's move on. Go ahead and use a log egg now. <laughs> Guess our friend found that quite alluring. Law guarantees that our squirt and throw and sound gags will hit. Let's take advantage of this by using throw gags. And there you go, we got this man. Oof, the sure was a split first. See how it was knocked back and isn't lord anymore? Both throw and squirt gags yield bonus damage equal to the knockback value of the lord effect. Other sources of damage will unlaw the cog, but will not gain knockback damage, so be careful. In addition, drop gags cannot hit Lord Cogs. The next track I'll have you use is Trap. Go ahead and throw down a banana peel. Now watch and learn. Here's the deal. He'll slip and slide on this banana peel. Oh, that's a camera angle right there. Let's shock you some smoke dummies. Uh-oh. Well, now the whole squad's showing up. That's not... That's, that's pretty, uh... Pretty bad. Ouch, I wasn't expecting that. Pete's been messing with the script, I guess. When you start fighting actual cogs, they will attack every turn after the toons finish using their gags. Ugh. Anyway, you can see that trap hasn't done anything yet. Cogs must be lured into traps for them to work. This many cogs isn't a good situation. I'm gonna lure them all with my magnet so they can't attack. Would you give me a tune up to help me shake off that hit I took earlier? It'll also help increase my accuracy. So, what tune up does is it's a healing attack. Well, attack in loose terms. 
but it'll also increase the accuracy of the gag the person is using who you're healing. So law, which usually has a very mid-accuracy, will have that improved a fair bit if you heal them while they are luring. And that's very cool. That fall's gotten them dazed and confused now. I actually forgot that this is a feature in the game, not gonna lie. <laughs> Trap also deals a lot of damage, and this also may apply a daze effect. Similar to Sook, daze makes his cog less likely to dodge our attacks. Now then, I've had about enough of these desk jockeys. Time for the last track. Sound! It hits all the cogs in the battle. Sound off, rookie. And here is the most overpowered and most infamous gag in all of Toontown. In original Toontown, this thing was stupid powerful, and basically you could easily destroy any group that you ran into with very little issue. And here they've actually managed to make it fairly balanced overall. And it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice they actually managed to fix sound somewhat. Are you okay, rookie? This desk jockey is a tough one. Using sound gives you the encore effect, which makes your next gag stronger. If you use sound when you use encore, however, you become winded, which makes your sound gags weaker for a few turns. And that should be everything you need to know about fighting cogs. I'll give you a turn up to get you back to full laugh. Choose a gag to finish the fight. Now let's finish this up with a good old throw, I think. Thank you, Loudon, for the for that. Appreciate it. And this man has been defeated. Get out of here. Good job, rookie. I think you're ready to take on the cogs. You now have a very tough decision to make. Which two gag tracks will you start with? Once you have decided, head back out to the classroom. He will want to talk with you. I've got to get back to the Tunish Q now. See ya, rookie. And there he goes. He's out of there. Now, what do we start with? That is the question. I... I'm honestly thinking Squirt and Zap, maybe, but I also want to do Throw. So I'm just deciding right now. I think I'm going to go with Squirt and Zap. I think that's probably the right decision. That's probably the right call to start out with. And then I'll get Throw afterwards, and then maybe Laura Sound, probably? I think that's probably a good way to start out. I definitely recommend Squirt and Zap to most people starting out. Lore is very, very frustrating to start with because you're spending most of the time fighting the accuracy, making sure everything actually hits. I think, I think Squirt and Zap is definitely the way to go for most people. If you want a comfortable experience, it's definitely the best choice starting out, I would definitely say that. And here we are, entering the actual game. Welcome back! I take it that the training went well? Well, I have a few welcome gifts for you. They do require some explanation, though. This is your sticker book. It contains all sorts of handy tools to help you around Toontown. Go ahead and open it. This is the district's page. Each district is its own copy of Toontown. This is the map page where you can view the entirety of Toontown. Some parts of the town are covered by clouds, but they'll become visible once you visit them. This is your Toon Tasks page. Here, you can see everything you're assigned to do around Toontown. Oh look, you have one right now. We gotta go see Flippy Dog and Bottom. No reward! What a... Oh, I can't believe that. This is the items and codes section. Here, you can customize your tune. This is your tune's wardrobe. It's pretty empty right now since you just got here. There are many ways you can expand your fashion. You look tune-tastic right now regardless. Let's continue to the next page. This is your cog gallery. We don't have much information on the cogs right now. So you'll have to fill this out as you encounter them. Does everything I said make sense? Cat got your tongue? Oh, you must not know how to speak with speed chat yet. Click on the speed chat button on the far left to say something to me. So, this is a pretty common uh, archetype, stereotype, I don't know what term to use, but almost every kid's MMO will do this thing where uh, your character just doesn't know how to speak until I ask them, oh, wait, you don't know how to talk? You know, it happens in original Toontown, Flippy's like, uh, you run into Flippy, and he's like, oh, you know, you don't know how to speak, let me teach you how to speak. It also happens in Wizard 101 and some of those other games, you know. Your character is just a mute until they aren't, and it's it's pretty funny. I'm gonna start out with the classic, you stink. Oh, wait, my character doesn't do the angry emote, this is so sad. Oh, I can't emote at all. Oh. Oh, and one more thing. Here you go. And we got the XP bar. 
This is the Xperia Mia, or the experience you earn from doing activities around town goes. This unlocks all kinds of cool things, like training points, increased gag storage, and increased laugh. That's all for me. Flippy wants to see you in the Toon Hall. Go ahead there first. It begins, ladies and gentlemen. See, I heard you graduated training. Congratulations! Oh, oh, Flippy, I can't believe you do this. I'm going to kill you! Welcome to Toontown Central. Let me show you around some most important landmarks. Oh, hey, this is really cool. They actually, like, show you around and do all that. It's actually really nice. Again, this was not in Clash originally. This was added very recently, this whole tutorial area. Showing you all of the major areas of the game. Like, this is sweet. I'm really glad they added all this for new players. The trolley! Up on with some tunes, or by yourself to play some tootastic minigames. Now, I think those are the most important playground buildings. Oh yes, how could I forget? I'm here in Toon Hall. Please, come inside so I can give you a proper Toontown welcome. And... There we go, everybody. We have finished the Toontorial. And now we're in the actual game. We are here. So the first thing that'll probably catch your eye when you go into the Toon Hall is uh, this thing right here. The Club Creation. So in Corporate Clash you can make your own clubs and join them as well. Uh, but to actually make a group, you have to have a lot of jelly beans saved. And honestly, half the time I wouldn't recommend it. I just recommend you join one of the big clubs that's already already around. It will definitely help you. You can get a lot of really cool rewards for just hanging around a club. And it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth joining one of the big clubs if you can. And you can just reap the benefits as long as you are uh, actually help out with the club and uh, get some of the club tasks done. Now we're gonna see the big man himself. Greetings, Snagglecorn! I can see you made it out of training alright. With all of that out of the way, I'd like to formally welcome you to the humbled home of Toontown. I'm the Toons Mayor Flippy. We're all incredibly glad to have you here. We need all the help we can get. I would have mentioned that you showed exponential promise as you were picking things up so quickly. Now then, Loudon is ready for you. He's stationed at the Toon HQ here in the playground. I hope that, in spite of everything, you enjoy your stay here in Toontown, Snagglecorn. I won't keep you any longer. Good luck out there. And we got our first catalogue as well. Which we can't do anything with right now. <laughs> but um, that is a thing. Um, so what you can do with the catalogue is you can head to your estate and buy clothes, um, furniture, all of that. Um, just all of that good stuff. But we have no beans right now, which is the currency, so we need to get some beans. But first, we gotta take this task. Hey again, Snagglecorn. Glad to see you're getting it settled in nicely. With how well you did in training, I'd say you'll be ready for some real tasking in no time. Here stand some of the most experienced and trusted resistance rangers in all of Toontown. Matter Harry, head of strategy and banana collection. Bumpy Bumple Bear, head of stealth tactics and round objects alike. Good old Giggles, head of disguises and order of acquiring. And me, leader of the resistance myself. When the Cogs first invaded, Toontown needed someone to help organize our retaliation. That's where I came in. There's dozens of us in Toontown now, and we're hoping you'll be able to join our hunt numbers someday. We'll start you out simple, don't you worry, Snagglecorn. First things first, you'll need some gags, and that means earning some jelly beans to buy them. There's a few ways to earn some around town. One of them is riding the trolley and playing some games. Up on there on your own or three of your friends. The trolley takes you to the gag shop after each game, so make sure you stack up before heading back. Go give it a try. Oh, this guy's also getting on the trolley, I think. Or is he? No, I don't think they're getting on. Oh, this is so sad. Is this guy getting on? I think this person's waiting for me to get off so he can get on. <laughs> okay, I gotta be sneaky. I think he wants to go on by himself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on as soon as it gets to one. We gotta do a sneaky on top of the trolley. <laughs> we gotta do a Chicago trolley. Here we go. Yes! This man was like, I do not want to ride with this bat. Well, fuck you, I'm getting on anyways. <laughs> okay. Man, this man is just... Just even, like, he's not even... <laughs> this man is not seeing a thing. Okay. Okay. 
So I gotta go into the ring with the star on it, you know, the matching ring. And uh, this is going pretty good. This is going quite well. I need to get on to here and and do this. Yes. Uh, why are you going into my ring? Uh, for some reason, collisions are still a thing in in this mini game. They disable collisions in the actual game, but inside the mini game, uh, collisions are still a thing for some goofy reason. And it creates a lot of awkward moments when you're trying to get through <laughs> this guy's ring. It, it's it's. Everyone has their own de 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 designated ring, and everyone just keeps bumping into each other. It's really awkward, but it's a lot of fun. And there we go, we got a perfect. Let's go. Let's let's go, gamers. Okay. <laughs> we did it. And there we go, we can get our first gags. Very nice. And you know what? I'll do one more. I don't know if these guys are doing another one, but I will do one. That guy left. Is the other guy- Oh, I think the other guy left. No! Oh, this is sad. Okay, I'll do one more. Got him! And now that that's done, we gotta head on back to my... Okay, my game froze for a second. I was like, did my game crash? <laughs> That'd have been pro quite, uh, quite goofy if it, if it crashed. Great job! Now that you're all stocked up, you're ready to take on some cogs. We've managed to keep the playground safe for now. You can still find cogs roaming the streets. You can go through each of the neighborhood tunnels on the playground to reach the streets. Try not to wander too far, as streets beyond Toontown Central's harbor more dangerous cogs. Defeat two cogs, then come back and let me know when you're finished. Stay safe out there. And now we're off to take down our first two cogs. And you know what? I'm, I think this should be fine. I think we should be fine. The chances of something bad going on, uh, right here, right now, are like astronomically low. I think we should be okay. I think we should be fine. Alright. Here we go. Let's take on our first cog. Okay, so. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to squirt and then hit him with the zap. This should be enough to kill if we hit both gags, I believe? How much does the... Oh, and that's a mini boss they added recently, um, the Duck Shuffler. We are not fighting him yet. We are not fighting him for a little bit. But uh, he is quite the character. You will see eventually why he is so. And that is our first Kog defeated with the Joy Buzzer. And, uh, there we go. Now, one thing you will want to do is you will want to try and avoid taking down level 3 and 4 cogs until you're at decent laugh. Currently, I'm only at 15 laugh, and if I try and pick a fight with a level 3 and especially level 4 cat gog, uh, I will get my ass whooped and sent back to the playground immediately. Unless I get very, very lucky. And I, I would not risk it. I would definitely not risk it until you're around at least 20 left. Just try and focus on level 1 and 2 cogs at the beginning. Uh, you will thank me later. Now, one piece of advice I can also give is these little knock-knock doors right here. If you stand up to them and listen to the knock-knock joke, you will get a heal. <laughs> and a lot of people don't actually know this, but this is a helpful little thing if you're doing uh, stuff on the streets. And I would definitely recommend it. I would definitely recommend doing this. Now this man will face the wrath of my flower. There you go. Oh, and I, I dodged the attack. Let's go. That's class. And... Death. That is the second cog down. And while I'm here, I will also show another thing that was added in 1.3, and it's very handy. It's a very useful feature, and it's very nice that they finally added it. This man is getting into an altercation, I have no part in that. But this is the gag and go. Um, this is a feature that was added in 1.3 as well, and essentially it's just a portable gag shop. They charge you a little bit more for the gags here, um, but here. You get gags on the go, it's very convenient, it's very nice, and hey. If you're training on the street or anything, you can just restock here, it's very cool. And in this game, beans are not exactly a rare commodity. Um, you get beans for doing basically anything in this game, so 
you know, you might as well, right? Might as well just spend those beans on something. <laughs> might as well. With that done, I want to quickly show you guys something, actually. Now, you might be thinking, why does this statue look so bizarre? You know, you got the, the dog, and the duck, and two mice. And you've, you've probably figured out what's going on here. But in original Toontown, uh, this featured Mickey, and, and Donald, and Goofy. But uh, they had to remove that in Clash, because they've removed pretty much every like blatant Disney reference. And, uh... <laughs> They, they basically went the cheap option here and just added the Toontown species here, and it looks so bad that it's good. I actually love this. Like, it, it looks so stupid, but I can't help but adore it. Like, this is such an amazing feature. Just, I hope they never replace this. this looks, it just looks so funny. Like, I, I can't not love it. Nice work taking down those cogs. As you may have noticed, cogs come in very all different shapes and sizes and suits. From what we know, there's five departments. Cellbot, Cashbot, Lawbot, Bossbot, and Boardbot. You may even want to check out the cog gallery page in your sticker book from time to time if you're curious. Now, let's try defeating the cogs from a specific department. Check your tomb tasks and follow what it says. Alright, let's see what our first actual task is. Three boss bots. Okay, I can do that. That's pretty manageable. Now, I'm trying to remember which street has, like, the highest ratio of boss bots. Um, each street has a certain amount. So, I believe Wacky Wee is mostly ball bots. Uh, Silly Street is, like, a mix of all five, like, equally. I think it's 20% for each. I think Loopy Lane is mostly cash bot, and uh, Punchline Place is mostly cell bot, if I recall correctly. Might be the other way around. But I think Silly Street actually has the highest percentage, because it's like 20%. And then all the other streets sell like a mid-percentage. So I guess we'll look around this street and uh, see if we can find any flunkies. And speak of the devil. Two of them right next to you. Okay, one of them, I guess. <laughs> okay, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But um, this game can be weird and unpredictable sometimes, so that's fine. I just hope another one spawns in this street. Oh, we might have to change districts. Get out of here! Kaboom! Looking for Flunky, going to crush him. This is the song when looking for the Flunky. Ow! We're getting hit. We're sensitive creatures. And, uh, there you go. Oh. oh, and right behind me there's another one, but first I'm gonna get a quick heal. You know, you can never be too careful. Hear me who? Hear me afraid I should've... Oh my god, yes, I love, I love knock knock jokes. They're like the most boomer form of jokes in existence, and I... I... I can't say I hate them, but they're definitely a type of joke that exists. Well, hey, we've had pretty good luck so far. None of our gags have missed. Um, I tend to have a really bad luck. Like, I have, like, a curse when I play Toontown, right? Whenever I start a, a new tune, all my gags just miss immediately. Uh, like, the first time I use them. But, hey, this is going pretty good so far. There we go. Back already. Turnaround times like that. I think you're ready to take down some real resistance work. Go ahead and talk to my colleague, Matt Harry. Hello, mate. Welcome to the Tomb Resistance. Alright, there's a lot of dialogue in this game. Um, original Toontown didn't have nearly as much as this. This game is almost like a, a visual novel or something, with how much dialogue it has. It's kinda... <laughs> it's kinda crazy. Oh, there's the Duck Shuffler again. Okay, well, he's just... You're gonna see him quite a bit. He, he just tends to walk around the street a fair bit. But, uh, <laughs> thankfully he can't join fights unless you, like, intentionally, like, pick a fight with him. So, here, yeah, that's good at least. Um, you know, maybe soon, maybe soon if I can get a team together we can fight this man. Oh, yes, I use that new resistance recruit. Welcome to the gym. I train all toons to grow big, strong muscles. That is, if I had my equipment. I have a bit of a problem, you see. My scratch racks and heavy weights have been lifted by the cogs. I need you to go back to them and find brings them to me so I can continue training tunes. And try not to struggle with lifting them with your little scrawny muscles. Remember to use the legs and not see back. But uh, yes, 
we must fight some robots uh, to recover his gym equipment, which got stolen from him. And this is our first recovery task, actually. So the way this works is if you kill a cog, there's like a very small... It depends on the task, but there's like a percentage that you'll recover a thing from them. Uh, and it's very annoying. These tasks can get very grindy at times. They were a lot worse in original Toontown, though. They were stupid annoying in that game, but here they're pretty tolerable. But sometimes I do just wish they got removed entirely. So, using the same strategy as before, just squirt and zap. Uh, nothing too special, but it works. And again, I definitely recommend squirt and zap as your starting gag tracks. It works very nicely, and also I, got, I just got burnt alive, you know. Quite unfortunate. Not as unfortunate as this man's demise, though. So, with that said, I did not recover the thing! <laughs> okay, um, remember what I literally just said? Yeah, these can get a bit annoying. These can get just mildly infuriating at times. And it doesn't look like there's a level 1 over here, or is there? That's a level 3 EXE. Do not want to tangle with these guys. Um, an EXE cog has higher damage, higher health, and I think they have a higher miss rate too. So you have to be careful with these guys. They're not super dangerous, but they are a bit more like... They'll put up a bit more of a fight than the average cog, so you have to be careful with them. This is our first time fighting a level 2, so the thing with this guy is as Zap is not going to kill him, it's going to leave him with 1 HP. Uh, so, we're going to have to use another Squirt on him afterwards, but we can just heal from the doors afterwards too. So yeah, that's good. There is no limit to how much you can heal from those doors, so we basically have infinite healing on the street, and that's a very lovely feature. That was not an original Toontown, um, and it's not in TTR. And there's our first gag miss. Okay, great. And we missed too. Okay, that's good. We dodged the attack. But like Sans, the skeleton. But yes, that's a new feature they added, and it's very, very handy. And we recovered it. That's class. There is also a building dying in the background. Uh, pay no mind to that. Ah, perfect. These supplies look immaculate. As my form when squatting when the thousand pound weight. I thank you for returning these, but I think you will be need more training. Or find free cogs and terminate them. <laughs> I am sure you will be back in no time. Yes, you need to terminate the cogs. Just utterly d destroy those guys. You know, leave no s no turn. Leave no stone unturned. Fucking decimate them. Die. Just. Destruction. Hellfire raining down on the cogs. Okay. Now, you know what? While we take these guys on, how about we make it a little uh, montage? And they are dead, and we got an achievement too for defeating 10 cogs. How lovely. Bravo, you are truly a special specimen. Run, go, get to the headquarters. And uh, there we go, that's the first real task done. Very cool, you'll love to see it. Now I think we're gonna end off the episode here, but before we do that, how about we very quickly go and uh, check out our estate. This is your Toon estate. This whole area, at least in original Toontown, and to a lesser extent in Clash, has this very weird, kind of almost liminal kind of feel to it. In original Toontown, um, this whole area had no music at all. There was music made for it, but it just never got into the game for some reason. And it's just bizarre. Like, it's this big, empty space that has, like, no real, like, area it could theoretically be in, in the Toontown world. Like, it doesn't seem to appear on the map. Maybe this is it here, like, this hill area? Um... Like, I have no idea. And it... If you go inside a, like, unoccupied house, there's no mailbox or anything. And inside is just... It's just empty white walls with, like, this generic, like, floor texture. It's bizarre. It's... Really strange. The, the estates just have this really haunted, kind of weird feel to it. It's... Really weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, it feels very strange, and like, 
The states in this game just overall feel very unfinished, and it's it's very funny. It's very goofy to look at. But uh, here we are in our house, and it's looking a bit less liminal. For some reason, the uh, fireplace is just blocking the, the the window. And I, for some reason, can't edit my estate. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if they removed that feature or what, but I just can't... I, I can't edit the house for some strange reason, but we can use the phone. And uh, let's see if we can order something. I don't really have many beans, but uh, maybe we can get something. We could get a single flower shirt. We can't get any phrases. Nah, we can't really get anything <laughs> besides uh, just a single flower shirt. But uh, here, there's some there's some pretty nice stuff in here. We can get these uh, these emotes and everything. And I sh I should probably get some stuff from my from my main account. I should probably do that. But uh, you know what? We'll do that next next episode. And yes, I think I think that's gonna do it for the first episode of this series. This has been quite fun. I'm gonna try and get at least one episode out a week if I can, and uh, we'll see how this goes. I really want to try and get as many people as I can into this game who may not have tried that out otherwise. And I really want this series to be a sort of entry level thing for people who want to try out this game. And if you're ever unsure about Toontown or want to introduce this game to somebody, then maybe you can show this video to somebody and uh, see what they think. So yeah, with all of that said, this has been Goat Blake and the first episode of the Toontown Copper Clash series. Adios, gamers.